Hi everyone, Mrs V here and today we are going to do some practice problems to practice our use of skeletal formulae for organic compounds. So on with the whiteboard and let's get started. Okay, so you'll remember in our last video we talked about different ways to represent organic compounds and one of these was the skeletal formula. Now these are really simple ways to represent organic compounds and that's important because organic molecules can be very very large and can be quite confusing to draw formulae for. So this method really simplifies things. So remember in a skeletal formula there's a carbon atom on each end of every line and it has the correct number of hydrogens to make four bonds. So we don't show carbons and hydrogens in skeletal formulae, but all the other atoms are shown. So let's look at some examples. So our example, our first example here, to interpret this, just remember there's a carbon at the end of every line and that that carbon has the correct number of hydrogens to be making four bonds. So this first carbon here is making one bond. So to make four bonds, it will need three hydrogens. This next carbon is making two bonds. So it's gonna need two hydrogens. Our next carbon is making one, two, three bonds. So it will need one hydrogen. And next one making two bonds will need two hydrogens. And then our final one here on this line is making one bond, so it's going to need three hydrogens. If we look at the side branch now, we see this carbon here forming two bonds, meaning it will need two hydrogens. And this final carbon making one bond will need three hydrogens. So if we were to draw this out as a condensed formula, we would end up with CH3, CH2, CH, CH2, CH3, and then this side branch is CH2, CH3. So quite often you'll find that the way this concept is tested is that they actually ask you, they give you a skeletal formula and ask you for the molecular formula. And this is sort of like the intermediate step once you've actually worked out where the carbons are, which ones have high, how many hydrogens each carbon has, then it's just simply a matter of counting the atoms and you can do the molecular formula. So this one, if we counted the carbons, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven carbons. So that would be C7. And there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So the molecular formula would be C7H16 for that one. All right, let's have another example. All right, this is an example of that includes a double bond. So where you see this double line here, that's a double bond. So if we take that off. Let's look at what where the carbons are. So we have air on each end of every line is a carbon atom. Then it's a matter of counting the number of bonds each one is making and putting in the appropriate number of hydrogens. So this one's making two bonds, so that will be H2. This one's making two bonds, so that will also be H2. This one's making two bonds, so that's H2. Again, two bonds, so H2. This one's making one, two, three bonds. So that's the CH. Remember the double bond counts for two bonds. As with this one, it's making three bonds. So that's a CH. So if we were gonna draw this one out, we have CH2, 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 CH, then the double bond CH in the ring. All right. I want you to pause the video and I want you to try example three. All right, let's have a look. Carbons on each end of every line. Now there isn't a carbon here. There isn't a carbon here because this is bonded to the OH. 
not to a carbon. So when you see the bond going to a specified atom, there's no carbon there. All right, hydrogens. This one, making one bond, so H3. This one here is making three bonds, so that's just a CH. Here making two bonds, CH2, making one bond, CH3. So to draw this one out, CH3, CH, CH2, CH3, and off of that CH is just the OH. So if we were going to find the molecular formula for this one, we've got one, two, three, four carbons. So it's C4, and we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hydrogens, and the oxygen. You might also write this as C4H9OH. Quite often with the hydroxyl group, the OH, we keep that together to demonstrate that that is in fact an alcohol or an alkanol. So having an OH group there makes you an alcohol. The correct IUPAC term for that is alkanol. All right, again, have a go at this one. So pause the video and we'll be back with the answer. All right, let's put in the carbons. Again, we don't put one here because we've got the OH group there. Now, the correct number of hydrogens, this one will be an H3 because it's making one bond. This one will be an H2. This one will be an H2. Now, this carbon here is already making two bonds with the oxygen here. So we've got two bonds here and two bonds there. So that doesn't need any hydrogens. So to draw that one out, CH3, CH2, CH2. With the, this here is a carboxylic acid group. So all carboxylic acids have that group on the end there. All right, let's work backwards. Let's go from a full formula to the skeletal formula. So for this one, our first example here, we have three carbons in a line. So one, two, three carbons, and there are no other atoms except hydrogen. So this is the skeletal formula, that is propane. In this next one, we have four carbons in a line. So that's one, two, three, four. And off of this second carbon atom here, we have a methyl group, which is just showing another carbon there. All right, onto the third one. We've got three carbons here in a line. The end one has a double bond to an oxygen. And then the OH group. Now, in the, it shows, it actually shows the double bond to the oxygen above in the full formula, but it doesn't really matter. You tend to just keep everything you know, in these perfect sort of hexagonal, you can actually get hexagonal drawing paper like to take your organic chemistry notes that has a template like this so that you can go and get those perfect angles. But um, we're just going to do the best we can with what we have. All right, let's undo that. Just in case anybody thinks that's the skeletal formula, it's not. All right, let's have a look at this one. What do we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons in a line. So two, three, four, five, six. The final carbon has a triple bond to a nitrogen atom. So a triple bond would be three lines to a nitrogen. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. This is ethanol, the alcohol that's in alcoholic drinks, ethanol. So we have two carbons in a line. 
So there's two carbons in a line. And this one is, end one is bonded to an OH. And finally, what do we have here? We have, let's explore what this might actually look like. So we've got a nitrogen in the middle there that's bonded to a hydrogen and to a methyl group and to an ethyl group. So this the skeletal formula would look like that. Oops, we'll make that one go up again. And we would generally show the hydrogen that's attached to that nitrogen. All right, that's all we've got for you for this one. Keep on practicing those skeletal formulae. It's just a matter of practice until you start to be really comfortable with using those formulae. And I will see you in the next video.